Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you all. I'm Joseph Maida. I'm the chair of the BFA photo and video department. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this portion of our open house. I'd like to start up asking how you're all doing. How's everyone? Good this morning? Great. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, I want to give you a quick overview of what to expect, because I know I always kind of like what the agenda is. Um, so we're going to be here in the theater for about the next hour. Uh, and for those of you who are live streaming, you'll be able to enjoy this portion of the event. And it's a chance to hear a little bit about the department from me and from my colleague Talia Steinman. And when I'm done speaking, Talia will be hosting a panel conversation with two of our seniors and two of our recent graduates. So you also get to hear from our current students and some folks who are recently graduated from the program. Following this portion, we'll be heading over to our photo and video building on the east side. Uh, and we'll be giving you some detailed tours where you'll get to see our incredible facilities, our um, extensive equipment, and you'll get to meet some of our faculty, current students, staff, uh, and alumni. So, uh, and you'll also get to see some exhibitions that are on view uh, in our building. We have two photo shows that are up as well as an exhibition around the photo book that features not only the work of important artists uh, who have made contributions to the history of photography in book form, but some of the work of the class of 2023 who have also made their own monographic works in conversation with these his important historic documents. So you'll get to see that show as well. Uh, following that, you'll all get to join us for a chance to talk with me individually if you have any questions and for lunch. Is anybody hungry already? <laughs> I am too a little bit. So, so lunch is coming. Can look forward to that too. Um, for those who are live streaming, I want to um, welcome you as well and invite you to uh, since you're not able to be here in person today, you're always welcome to reach out to admissions. Admissions host tours of our facilities throughout the fall and into the spring. So if you'd like to come and actually see the facilities after today's event, we would be really happy to welcome you in person as well. So with this portion of the event, since you're going to get to all see the amazing facilities and equipment a little later, I'd actually like to focus on another asset. Um, our facilities and equipment are world class. I mean, they're really exceptional and they speak for themselves. So you'll see that. But what I'd actually like to do is speak to what I think is our greatest asset, which is who we are, because I think community is vital uh, and we're a pretty spectacular community. So I'd like to use this as an opportunity to introduce myself, introduce my colleague, um, introduce some of the faculty through video, through some of our alumni, some students, so you can get a sense of who are the people at SVA, and specifically, what community am I joining by being a part of BFA Photo and Video. With that, I'm going to actually start out by showing you a short video that will give you an introduction to a couple of our recent grads and some of our faculty members, and give you a bit of an overview of the types of programming and exhibitions that we do to support our students. So with that, here's a short video. The small capacity of the class also helps to create the highly engaging relationship between the professor, the classmates, and you. I think SBA BABFA photo and video is actually a world class art program in a world-class city. And I think that it's special because of where it is, but it's more special because of who we are.
So I'd like to tell you a little bit about how our program is structured because I think a key feature of BFA photo and video at SVA is that for those of you who already know you have a real interest in this medium or media, um, we start uh, from day one teaching you photo and video. So our foundation is specifically to the media that you're here for. So you get to work in the studio, learn about video, use the equipment, get into the dark room, use the large format inkjet printers in your first semester. So we don't delay because in a way we think if we know we need to prepare you professionally to give you that extra year as opposed to doing a foundation and maybe you know painting and drawing before you move on to that, it actually gives you a head start so you get a solid four years of education. And in that way, our students actually graduate with a very robust education that prepares them for their professional experiences. You might think of this in a way of kind of doing something that is in a bit like being the equivalent of actually getting an MFA in terms of the amount of education that you get because you're getting four solid years in photo and video. So our curriculum is structured in four components and one of the biggest components is technical. Photo and video are pretty technical media that have a lot of equipment. They require an understanding of lighting. They uh, require an understanding of camera equipment. They, um, at this generation, require a lot of understanding of computer hardware and software and how all of that works together. So a huge part of your first and second year in our department is actually a technical foundation in both photography and video, as well as other media which, with which we intersect. On top of that, we're committed to thinking about the, um, the conceptual concerns of photography. How do we think about how an image creates an idea or expresses something? Because keep in mind that photography and video are languages. And if you think about this, I would argue they're the most universal languages that we have. You can look at a photograph or six people speaking six different languages can look at a photograph and even though they may not be able to discuss the photograph in words because of different mother tongues, they can actually understand something about the language of the picture and information can be conveyed. So our department is actually working to train our students to understand how to speak photographically, whether in still or moving image, but in addition to also be able to read photographically because the other side of communication is not just getting up and speaking, but it's actually thinking about can someone understand it and how do I understand it. So in addition to the technical component of our curriculum, we talk a lot about conceptual concerns, um, how images function. Then we are really invested too in art history because it's really important if we want to know where we are and where we'd like to go to understand actually where we've been. History matters and if we don't know where we've been, we can't really identify where we currently are, right? Because the current moment is an accumulation of the past that gets us here. And if we want a vision of the future, if we want to have a voice and have an impact in where we're going, we actually need to know where we are and where we want to be. So we believe that the past and the future are closely connected in the present moment, which is why we ensure that art history, the history of photography, the history of video, and larger histories are accounted for. Our approach to history actually recognizes that history is never singular. It's as diverse as all of we are. And so the way that we approach history is to give you as much access to varied sort of approaches and sort of points of view in terms of history. Because I think the way that we reach sort of ideas of truth is not through a singular history, but through exposure to multiple histories. That allows us to actually understand perspectives and to be successful citizens in a global era. And then the fourth component is theoretical aspects. For those of you who are a bit more theory driven, we have a number of classes that deal with theory. And so for people who would like to elect a more theoretical approach to photography and video, we offer that as well. So it's kind of a fourfold approach. Um, and the beginning first two years, there's a bit more technical emphasis and art historic emphasis. And then the conceptual and theoretical sort of build in the first year, but become more substantial in the third and fourth years. Because we have the great privilege and advantage of being able to allow you to study photo and video technically from your first semester, this means that by your third semester, uh, by your third year rather, you're kind of where people at other schools may be in their fourth year. This means you have two years, your junior and senior year, to really focus in on what you've learned, to hone a particular area of expertise, and to get feedback conceptually, theoretically, um, and technically to ensure that you have a really solid portfolio to actually succeed in whatever aspect of photo and video uh, beyond your time with us in college. 
So that's a bit of how things work. I'm kind of curious just to kind of make us think about how central photo and video are as, as contemporary currencies to ask y'all a couple questions. Um, well, we know the people that are live streaming are watching video right now, so that checks off the fact we know people are consuming video. How many of you have looked at some photographs already today? Let's see, how many of you have been on Instagram? Uh, how many of you have been on TikTok? All right, so this is kind of case in point. And even if you haven't been on those platforms, most of us have, um, you've, you've passed by some billboards, uh, you just saw some video in the other room, I showed you a video. We're always consuming photographic language. To understand how these languages work is real power, it's real agency. It's the ability to not only be very successful, but it's also the potential to actually create social change because these media are really powerful. When we see photographic imagery or video imagery, it conveys a message and that message informs us. So much of what we consume, if you think about it, if I think about the last pair of sneakers I bought a couple weeks ago, I saw a really nice ad for them, didn't even know I wanted them. But once I saw the ad, I realized I needed to have them and I bought them. Photography was actually influential in that purchase because before I saw the picture, I didn't even know I wanted them. Um, so pictures do have a lot of, a lot of impact. Um, they also have impact even in more social political areas, right? When we think about imagery of conflict, when we see imagery of conflict, it allows us to actually have more empathy, more understanding, more knowledge, and ultimately more humanity. So I'd like for all of you right now to take a moment and to think about imagining yourself in a photo and video program, imagining yourself here in our department in BFA photo and video, and trying to think in four years, well, five years from now actually, who do I wanna become? How would I use this degree to become the person that I want to be who can use photo and video in a meaningful way? Some of you may say, well, I already know it. I wanna be a fashion photographer. And we can support that really well. We've had great fashion photographers go through our department. Some of you may wanna work as a social documentary photographer or a journalist working in the area of newspaper or magazines. We have a number of alumni who have done that. Some of you may say, well, I just wanna be a fine artist who uses photography and video and incorporate it into my work. And we have folks who have done that. But the point that I want to stress is that because photo and video are so central to our culture, because they are the central, and I would argue most valuable currency of the 21st century, what you can do with this degree is almost limitless because everything is about photography and video now. Everything comes back to how we understand it through photographic imagery and through moving imagery. So with that, I'd like to share with you a highlight video to introduce you to some other members of our community, our alumni. And in this video, you're gonna actually get to see the range of professions, and this is not comprehensive, it's still just a selection, but you're gonna get to see the range of professions that our alumni go on to do successfully, which includes some of the areas that I've mentioned and some other areas that even go beyond what you might think about as possible with this education. So with that, let me share another video with you. Hi, my name is Jeremy Cohen and I'm a photographer based here in Brooklyn. New York City is the best city in the world, especially for photographers because the most opportunity is here. My time at SVA showed me that I am an artist and that I am somebody who loves what I do and loves my work. I am a video director, 3D artist, creative director, and sometimes photographer. I owe basically my creative style and my work to all the experimenting that I've done within different techniques and mediums. My name is Louise Palmberg, currently specialized in commercial work in the food and beverage space. I 
did an internship at Saturday Night Live. It was in direct correlation with my interests of photography and performance and comedy and costumes and characters and being surrounded by a cultural legacy. I am currently a photo director at Apple. I professionally specialize in creative direction for photography and motion. My career kind of started while I was still a student at SBA. Wednesday, I got a call from the New York Times. I am an artist and educator whose work oscillates between studio portraiture to documentary photography and archival research. I had the portfolio of my family where Metro Los Angeles asked me if I had a body of work that I wanted to submit for a, a public art and that was kind of unheard of. I was really young. While I was at SVA, I interned at a couple of different magazines and then luckily right before I graduated I was offered a full-time position at one of these magazines. My work deals with identity, my own identity in being a Korean and Black woman. While I was at SVA, I was really interested in what materials I could print on. I got a job at a commercial print facility where I could sort of explore what the possibilities for photography were. I am currently a senior visuals editor on two brands, Glamour Magazine and Allure Magazine. SVA gave me the education to know why I'm making the pictures I'm, I'm making, why I'm taking the pictures that I'm taking, or choosing the photos that I'm choosing at The Intercept. I'm really thankful for where I've come from and how I've grown as an artist because of my time at SVA. So I'd like to now speak to you a bit about um, community, uh, but I'd like to talk to you that in kind of the more professional way in which people, when they say the word network, what they're often talking about is professional community. We believe in the vital um, component of community as a way in which we grow, in which we learn, and ways in which that we succeed, and so our department is very much committed to building community. One of the ways that we do that is actually through having such a robust alumni network, people who go on to be so successful in the field. You just heard from about a dozen of folks, and this is a, just a small section. We could watch hours and hours of footage of success stories of people making great change and doing impressive work in the field, not only here in New York City, and not only throughout the United States, but across the globe. So we're really proud of the alumni network that we have specifically from photo and video. And you may say, well, how do you have such great alumni? Well, we have really good students, right? Students beget good alumni. And the awesome thing about that relationship is that when you have such a robust alumni network who have been educated in some similar ways, they tend to be attracted to recent grads when they are able to do a hiring opportunity. So a lot of the opportunities that happen for our recent grads is through our alumni network because when someone sees someone who has gone through the same program, they can be sure that there's some kind of intersection in terms of how one is thinking about photography and video uh, and how they're approaching the media. The other part of our network, or really, I'd like to, I prefer to say community, but you may hear the word network sometimes. So the other part of our community is our faculty. And think about this, because we're a photo and video department that starts with photo and video from the first day of your time with us in your freshman year, on your first day of classes, you're already building your community or your network because your teachers are active professionals working in all aspects of photo and video in the real world. And the advantage of that is that they're actually teaching from their lived experience as people who know how the, how the profession functions and what are the opportunities, what are the particular challenges, what is it that you need to know to be able to be successful if you'd like to also go on to work in that field. So through our alumni network, through our faculty network, and then also through some of our broader networks, we're able to provide incredible support in preparing our students to succeed once they graduate. I'd like to also highlight something that we do in the fourth year, which is for our students, we pair our students with members of our community beyond our faculty, because there are a lot of great people that we are connected to that don't actually have the ability because of their other job to teach in the department. 
but we do pair our seniors with curators from major museums, with editors from major magazines and newspapers, with writers, directors, gallerists, um, as part of our mentor program. And this is a chance to actually connect our students with members of the community beyond our direct faculty uh, on the eve of their graduation to give them some professional connections that will help them once they've graduated. So we're very much committed to community. And as I said, we understand that in order to have great alumni, we need to attract great students. Uh, and we really do believe that students are kind of the backbone of our department. That may be the perfect segue to introduce my colleague Talia Steinman, who is our curriculum coordinator and assistant to the chair, who is going to introduce you to two current fourth year students in our department, as well as two uh, alumni from the class of 2023, recent grads, um, who are gonna talk to you a bit about their experience, and then there will be a chance for you to actually ask some questions if you'd like to ask them directly. Following that presentation, I'll return to the podium. If anyone has a question, I'm happy to answer questions as well. And I'll also be back at the photo building for the next portion to talk with all of you individually um, then. So with that, please join me in welcoming Talia Steinman. Thank you, Joe. And hello, everyone. I'm Talia Steinman. I'm the um, curriculum coordinator and assistant to the chair in the BFA photo and video department. I work very closely with Joe um, in the chair's office. And um, I'll shortly be moderating a panel with um, two esteemed current students and, uh, rec and then two recent graduates. Um, but before you actually meet them when they come up on the stage, we thought we would introduce you to their work, um, specifically work from the past academic year. Um, so you have that as a visual reference. And then um, when we're sitting on the stage, we'll have them sit in order of this presentation so you can kind of create that one-to-one -one, uh, relationship. So I'll get started on showing you their work and um, let you take that all in. you uh, spent some time looking at those images. I know it's a bit quick. Um, before I introduce everyone and, and have them come up on the stage, I also want to mention that you can actually see their work um, a bit more later on today in various ways. Um, for the two that you recently saw, um, 
Kyle and Rebecca, who recently graduated in May, you um, will be able to see both of their senior monographs featured in our picture library exhibition that'll be on the fourth floor of our building for those of you who are here in person and going on the tour. Um, Zheng, uh, one of our current students, was one of the five students selected for a residency in Italy last year that was really exciting. Um, and there was an exhibition and catalog that resulted from that, and that catalog will be on view on our second floor during the tour. And then lastly, the first person from the slideshow saying um, actually has an exhibition opening today uh, downtown at Key Smith Gallery. Um, so that's all very exciting, and they'll tell you much more about it. I'm gonna invite them to come up on the stage so we can hear directly from all four people now. Can you all hear me? So we got a visual reference for everyone's work. Now I want you to actually hear from them and, and uh, meet them, hear who they are. So I'm gonna ask that each of you introduce yourself with your full name, um, your pronouns, what year you're in or what year you graduated, where you were located before SVA, and then just um, a little bit about your work, um, whether it's the work that we just saw, or um, just a general summary. Hey, hey um, my name is Sang. I go by he, him, and I'm a fourth year student at SVA photo and video program. And um, I'm from South Korea, and I moved to New York in 2019 to study at SVA. Um, I take pictures of space, sight, and objects, or you can call it landscape photos. And I'm focusing on the idea to have a deeper understandings of myself through the environment that I'm in or through the nature. Hi guys, my name is Jane. I go by she, her. Um, I'm from Beijing, China, and I'm currently a senior, senior student in SVA. And I'm currently doing conceptual photography a lot. And um, for, the, for the project show in the screen, um, it's basically um, kind of like the the homesick feeling, like from like stay away from a home for a long time. So the kind of like a sensitivity that in my heart, and I try to like express it with the photography language. So, hey guys, my name is Becca. Uh, I am originally from South Florida. My pronouns are she they. Uh, I just graduated from SVA in 2023. Uh, and my work is mainly fashion oriented. I do fashion stories um, that are really inspired by campy and maximalist style. Uh, and then I also photograph drag, um, drag events usually focusing on detail. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle. My pronouns are he, him. I'm originally from Rockland County, New York, which is not too far from here. Um, I graduated in the spring, so 2023. And my work, tends to explore family history, blending um, history, myth, and personal nar narrative, working with materials that were donated to me by different family members through cloth photo um, photographs, as well as like other materials. And I'm working towards creating a fuller picture of a, fam a, a more complete family portrait, essentially. Thanks, everyone. I forgot to mention my pronouns are she, her. Um, and all right, so let's jump into our next question. Um, I'm going to ask that at least one or two of you share why did you choose to come to SBA? I would love to answer this question. I talk about this, I've, I've talked about this many times, but um, there are a few reasons. Um, I had a 
somewhat unique experience where I went to an arts middle and an arts high school. So I had been doing art a really long time and I had a really clear idea of what I wanted to do. I know I wanted to go into fashion and I know I wanted to, I wanted to be a little bit more commercially oriented. Um, so the fact that at SVA in the photo and video department, I had a camera in my hand the first week of school, that was really important because as Joe and Talia have both said m multiple times, because you're jumping into photo and video your first year, you are able to get more advanced in your learning by the time you're a junior and senior. And I knew that that was really important to me. Um, and I also knew that all of the faculty were working artists in the field. Um, so I knew I was going to be learning under people that could maybe be my boss or my coworker one day. I've gotten like many opportunities from the people that I've you know taken classes with. Um, so those were two really really key uh, factors for me. And I applied to like twelve schools throughout the Northeast. So and I ended up here. Awesome. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, all right. So this one is for for all of you. So maybe we could um, even start with you saying. Um, how has or did, for those of you that just graduated, um, your work evolve as an SVA student? And that might be through electives that you took um, and where you were exploring different topics or ideas or from specific um, people in the community or classes that might have had an influence on your work. So um, yeah, we're speaking about how your work has evolved at SVA. Um, so for my freshman year and my sec until my second year, um, I was mostly focusing on documentary and photojournalism. But with the classes that we have within the photo program, um, I had a lot of different access to gain knowledge and learn about like how we could have different genres of art within the photo medium. And the, the different approach that we can get through the photography was kind of awakening for me because it, it, it's kind of like a very big shift from me to like go from documentary and photo, uh, photojournalism to fine art and landscape photos that I'm working on, which allow me to see my work in different perspectives, but also it allow me to see as a, as a, in a big form of art to, to, to understand my work in a better, um, deeper understandings in, in, a, in a more depth. Yeah, I was like the same thing, like in my first year in SVA, um, my professor asked me like, what genres of photography you like? I was like, I, everything, like, I took photos of landscape, food, um, portraits, I basically everything. But like through the learning like in SVA, like till now, I kind of like um, find my like the most interest, um, like genre of photography. And um, I enjoy like making, project like with my um, classmate and professor um, they give me advice that I'm really really pressure about it and yeah, yeah that's how they feel yeah and uh, Zheng we were talking earlier about how you're taking um, Gabby or Gabrielle Rusamanio's class beyond camera um, and how that's been having an impact on you this semester, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit yeah, about sure. that? Yeah, um, sure. Because right now, I want to be a fine art photographer. And it's hard for me to like kind of start my career, because I, I know nothing like how to start. So I, um, so for this semester, I, I select the course that is kind of like focused on your career. And my professor, Gabby, um, she's, she's like, she gave me so much like advice on how to start like, um, website for grants or scholarships that help you like build your website something and yeah after like I'm still in the mate of this like like mate term of this class and like but I, I, I already like got so many information that like how can I start my career maybe after graduation so awesome yeah uh, I would say the biggest way my work has evolved is I have a deeper understanding of the context in which my work will will like ha will will be in in, in the world I, I came into school new knowing that I wanted to do fashion but I didn't quite know what that meant um, and I've taken when I was in school I took all of my electives that I had chosen were based on either business or the fashion industry or like there's such a breadth of 
uh, of electives to be able to choose from that you can really sort of curate your curriculum to the genres in which you want to make work. Um, and I had a, a couple really pivotal classes about the fashion industry that really helped me gain an understanding of how it worked, um, editorial versus commercial, the timeline in which things are, the different types of jobs that there could be. Um, and now that I had all of that knowledge, um, I was able to think about my work and say like, okay, well, if I know this is the ultimate goal of how it will exist in the world, how can I make it fit that the best? Um, not that it changed it in a bad way, but just help me be more informed while, while making the work. Um, going into SVA, I have to say that my perspective or my understanding of photography was quite shallow um, and understanding all the capabilities that the photographic language can af um, allow you to communicate with other people. I went into SVA thinking that I wanted to do fashion photography and I was hell bent on making that work or making that like my career path going forward. And I was fortunate enough to interact with different prof professors whose works went beyond my shallow view of photography, enabling me to one, understand that the photographic language is capable of a lot more than I would say like, oh, I'm taking a photograph to highlight this garment of clothing or this specific type of look that's being pushed out in a advertising sense. Um, and I had a lot of professors that were using photography beyond just like a photographic image, were using photographic processes and were creating artwork. And sometime I would say like after sophomore year, I had realized that I'm really more interested in the conceptual aspects of photography and how that can be used in a broader art context. And as the years had gone on, my, and especially after graduation, my usage of photography as in like a use of a camera is quite limited after graduating. However, the way in which I think about it has been like a consistent factor in the way that I'm making and shaping my work, especially because I'm still using photographic images, even though they are not necessarily mine. Um, but also in my um, professional career work outside of like my artistic practice, it's something that I'm consistently considering um, with the types of images that I'm presenting um, for the work that I'm doing. Um, and I, yeah, I love hearing all of those answers. I think it really harkens back. Uh, is this working? I think it's working. Um, to what Joe was saying about, yeah, it's not? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, really harkens back to what Joe was saying about, about um, images really being this language that you're all speaking and, and you're finding different ways to be doing that. And, um, it's, it's great to see and it's great to hear about. Um, okay, so for those of you that are here in person, oh, thank you. Hello. <laughs> um, you'll be coming to see our building um, in Gramercy and you'll get to witness our uh, resources and facilities and equipment. Um, but that is a huge part of being in this department is, is the resources that we have here, whether it be the studios, the digital labs, um, scanners, printers, dark rooms, what have you. So I'd love to hear from all of you how you have taken advantage of these resources um, and yeah, particular things that stand out to you from, from using them. Sang? Yeah, um, like Joe mentioned um, before, when, when he started talking, um, we get to start to use all the equipments, like including the darkroom facilities and digital fac um, equipments on the fifth floor from the start of the freshman year. And I was, um, my process and my practice involves um, mostly in the darkroom printing process, which I use the alternative process of um, analog photographic printing, and which allow me to deep dive and more get to know how, how it's the approach is different compared to the digital printing and the analog um, darkroom printing. And it allowed me to explore more in the sense where you could 
kind of give it a try and see how it goes. And you, you get to learn how to print in many different papers and different techniques using digital technique and the analog technique. And it allowed me to continue to like bring the idea of how like printing matters in pho photography medium too, and allow me to keep working on working with the darkroom pr process, which um, the work that I'm showing tonight at the exhibition is also all made with darkroom printing, which I made it in the fourth floor, the, the darkroom facilities. And yeah, I think it's amazing to have all that access. And even sometimes when you try to use the gears or facilities, sometimes pe some, some of the people might be using or there might be some limitations, but we have different types of printers which everyone could use it at the same time and you could go in there and we have like three three different regular like black and white darkroom um, space as well as we have alternative um, more like deep um, different technique type of um, printing process rooms so um, it's really good amount of space for the students to get access to all kinds of different printing technique. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I do know that you've also been printing digitally on the fifth floor because I've seen you quite a bit there. So it's not just darkroom, is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, for me, um, like fifth floor is like kind of my my space because I enjoy like digital printing. Um, I make things for my project um, like a lot. So um, we have like so awesome printers in fifth fifth floor and. Um, simply, you just got paper and y y you just print with the awesome like printers. So, you, um, and we also have like zinc making supplies in hub, so we can like send out like simply just make hand handmade books like by the by ourselves. And also like um, in my uh, junior year, I also shoot fashion a lot, and um, it kind of like it saved me a lot of money like just simply using our school's facilities like studios. Um, like equipments that I can send out from Hub. Um, also, we got like me like this here. I shot portraits with medium formats cameras, both digitally and um, yeah, films. And yeah, it's like awesome. Um, I mean, chances to kind of try different kinds of cameras in school. Oh, that's great that you're using the digital medium format because that's a really fun piece of equipment we have. Yeah. It's always great to point out too um, about the, the printing labs is that oftentimes your teachers will have you bring prints to class. That's a really important part of, of creating your work is putting it up on the wall, being able to move it around, gathering around the photo as a class. Um, it's just, it, it, you can't compare it to seeing it on a screen. Um, so oftentimes your teachers will have you bring prints to class. I've often printed and then went straight to class, which I advise you to do your prints, you know, a couple days in advance, but um, so I was always in the labs, and I reserved the studios probably like dozens of times um, across my four years. So yeah, I've definitely taken advantage. I want to say that like everyone here really hit on the studios and the digital labs and the dark room, and those are all things that I used throughout my four years. But I also wanted to like emphasize the resources that SVA doesn't necessarily have at the time is one of the things that like. I was really um, responding to. I was, as my practice evolved through SVA, there was a need for me to have physical space that the SVA did not necessarily have when I came in as a freshman, but through advocating for myself and myself and other peers were like interested. It's like, hey, this is something that we need that will further our education. I feel as though SVA is very good at providing the resources. Like, okay, this is what our students need. We will do what we can to be able to provide this for them beyond what we already have. Like, we have world class resources, but there are always um, specifics that other students need that will further their education. And I think that SVA did a good job at meeting us where we were at and enabling us to make the best work for ourselves at school. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, so um, we're actually really grateful that uh, Kyle came to us because he needed studio space and we actually started a pilot program last year um, with a room in our building to um, use it for um, seniors and now uh, juniors can apply to, to use it for an extended period of time um, so that you can work in that installation 3D um, space without having to take the work down. And um, so now, you know, because of 
you know, you advocating for yourself and giving us that feedback, we're able to improve for everyone, which is awesome. And I'm happy to say that saying you, you applied for that this year, and now you're you're doing that later this semester, right? Yeah. So it's not not yet, but saying I'll be using that studio space soon. Um, awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, the next thing I wanted to touch on is opportunities. Um, uh, can you tell us about some internships, jobs, employment, or exhibition opportunities that have come your way while being a student at SBA? Um, because we have all, all um, professors who's working with different kinds of medium and the, they have different approach in their work and so like throughout the four year of courses you get to hear a lot of different critiques and it kind of make the way that how you could present and how you could be involved in the, in, in the art scene, especially for me. Um, I had an opportunity from my professor who introduced me to one of the galleries in Lower East Side and I had a really good um, contact with him and which allowed me to keep the connection with the, with the gallery personally and now it became more of a um, good result that I remember having an exhibition through that opportunity that my professor made. So to me, it's, it's, it's really important to be in touch and be in really close relationship with professors, which they allow you to make something and create something new and out there in the world, not in just in SVA, and which is a huge part for me. Awesome, and you applied for the department exhibition oh program yes. this semester too, and, and you'll be showing work Yes, in and the we also have uh, all kinds of different opportunity to exhibit your work in, not only in, in the photo department, but in like other like main buildings or as a representative, representing of the photo department students. So it's really good opportunity opportunity that you can have. Thanks, Sing. Um, for me, I'm having an internship this semester. And I actually just found the, found the position in the SBA Resource Center. And yeah, I'm working as a, as a gallery assistant um, for the internship. And also like last year, I have um, been selected into the department exhibition. I have a group exhibition in the second floor last year. Um, so that's a, like a awesome opportunity for me to kind of like a first show in my life. Amazing. Well, let's not forget that we had a really special um, Sorry, <laughs> opportunity last year, um, the Zanato residency, which um, is what I referenced earlier. You'll be able to see the catalog from it later in our building. But um, Zhang was one of five students that were selected to go to Italy for a week-long residency to create to create work at a winery. Do you want to tell us more about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, um, I, I went to the, the Italy for the residency program. Um, it's a, like five of us, we, we, we just like work together like in the wine, um, or is that wine? At a vineyard, yeah. Yeah, vineyard, at a vineyard. And we spend the week to kind of like, um, like just, just work, you know, work together and show photos. And we have to like, uh, we have to like um, create the project that both um, have our own selves, but like kind of like, um, um, like wait, wait, I kind of like lost my word. Yeah, kind of like explore the wine vineyard, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I enjoy like being being together with our like one of my prof our professor and other like classmates. Yeah, it's it's an awesome like opportunity to have like. A residency program in school. Yeah, and that, that was very uh, specific. Uh, Zanato, we had the opportunity to partner with them for um, the US uh, slash New York iteration of this program that they have. Um, and not only did you get to make work there and produce it, but then it got shown in Verona, Italy, and then <coughs> got included in this catalog. So did want to highlight that. <laughs> but um, Rebecca, why don't you tell us about your experience with opportunities? Yeah, um, I've got plenty of them. <laughs> uh, in 2021, I did the I internship for credit program, so I got school credit. Um, I was working as like a administrative assistant um, for Zach Krevit, who is a alum from 2014 of SVA. Um, they started a, a nonprofit, um, often working within like the so 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 social justice 
space. Um, so I got to work alongside Zach. Um, I've gotten plenty of opportunities to show at SVA. Um, in my junior year, I had a solo show in the fourth floor gallery space, which you guys will actually see later today. Not my show, but you'll see that space. Um, and uh, I've gotten a couple other like outside job opportunities from, uh, from c connecting with my teachers. I'm currently a stage manager at Gum Studios, um, and I sort of got that job. I mean, I applied on my own, but um, I didn't know that that would even be a job for me to apply to if I didn't take a certain class with a certain teacher. Uh, and then I was also part of the mentor show, which Joe was talking about earlier, a program where um, a, a number of seniors are paired with mentors outside of our SBA community. Um, and that was really important. That also, again, helped me gain a better understanding of where my work exists within the world. Thank you, and um, even after graduating, you're in an exhibition in the department, our picture library exhibition yes. <laughs> that's on view in our building, um, where everyone, every senior makes a monograph in their last year, um, and Rebecca and Kyle, which I'll let Kyle speak to that in a moment, um, their monographs are both on view, and you'll be able to see them there. Um, so I guess like also like Rebecca, having like a range of opportunities through SVA, um, on a, I ended up having like two internships through not even like professors of my own, more so like professors that I was like interested in the classes in and had meaning with them and being able to connect with individuals outside. So currently working as a, a curator for the archives of Jeffrey Holder and Andre Leon Talley, um, as well as I'm a study assistant for a recent uh, alumni of the Studio Museum in Harlem's residency. Um, I, while at SVA, I had done multiple different expi exhibitions throughout um, the school, including the ones within the photo department, um, doing having like a second floor show of oh, my junior year, as well as being part of the Becoming show and the Mentor show. Um, and those shows also gave me the, I want to say like the confidence as well to be able to show my work outside of SVA um, within the broader New York as well as outside of New York and Florida as well as Montreal. Um, and then I also was nominated at the end of, or halfway through my junior year to participate in the Yale Norfolk program, which is this um, pr um, prestigious program run through Yale University that um, some of the top art students around the country, well, more so around the world, all get together in Norfolk, Connecticut for this six week long residency where we get to work and crit and just make community and grow. Um, yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, both of you are uh, just out of school, but you're still uh, making work and, and doing things. Kyle, I know you just had an exhibition that was featured in Brooklyn Rail, which was very exciting. Um, and Rebecca, I know you've been working a lot of jobs as well, so that that's great. Um, awesome. So SVA is located in the heart of New York City, as you know, we all are here right now. Um, I was hoping that some of you could speak to what it's like to go to school in New York, specifically art school in New York. I can answer that because I feel like being in New York, one, we all talked about like all of these opportunities that we were afforded both in SVA but also outside of SVA and being located in New York makes it a lot easier to be able to access a lot of the opportunities that come with the field of study in photography. But also it enables you access to so much art, so many museums and galleries to get your eyes in front of, whether it's photo specific or other mediums as well. Um, other means of art, architecture, design, all of that to further inspire and inform your work. But also, I think, helps inform you in about the world in a way that which, if you had gone to school in a more, I won't, more of like a, a, a smaller college town where you're more um, insulated, I think being at SVA and being in New York allows you to grow up and grow up, I mean, not like sooner and to say that in a bad sense, but I hope I think being in New York and going to school in New York helps you mature into an individual and gives you a certain level of independence that you, I can't always speak to a lot of my peers 
um, from high school who had gone to school outside of New York. Um, going to school in New York gives you a certain level of independence that allows you to, that prepares you to be ready for the world after graduation. I definitely second what Kyle says, and I think for me, the 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 most key factor is just like I see other people like me when I'm walking to school, when I'm walking home, like anytime I'm on the street, I see other people like me, and I can't, you know, I can't always say that for for the the town where I'm from. Um, and when you see people like you that you identify with, that you feel at home with, that you feel comfortable with, it just inspires you to, to want to make work, to feel included enough and to feel um, safe enough to make work. Yeah, I mean, even as uh, international students, that kind of made me like think more as a, as a like home, like not feeling be, you know, foreigner like, for this city. And also, I, I feel it's impressive that we were embraced by so many kind of culture. I think culture makes photo. So it kind of like um, give us, like we learn everything from each other. Every, everyone's different, but everyone's like included in this city. So that's what I found like New York City. Yeah, um, and I could say like, like I, 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 I agree. And the diversity and the variety of students that we meet like within the SVA community, as well as the other schools around, because we're, surrounded by all kinds of different art schools and you know like different New York City schools and you get to meet different people with different culture and different environment who've been living totally different life and it's really always fascinating to to talk to someone that I've never like knew before and which has allowed you to like do like approach and see in different perspective which is really cool to have in New York City. Thank you. Yeah. Um do I have time for one more question? Um, why don't we actually, I think, open it up. Does anyone else have um, questions for our panelists here or for any of us? Um, I guess it's more for Rebecca. Um, what is your process as far as like fashion photography? Because like going listening to your pictures, they're actually something like I really wanted to do like exactly. So it's like um, I guess when you start, what is your process? You know to complete. Well, uh, when I was in school, um, I was sort of working on my own. So not only was I taking the photos, I was working on the lighting. I was also styling all, all of those shoots myself. Um, part of like the importance of my thesis and my statement um, was about um, finding the clothing myself. A lot of it's thrifted or secondhand. I love finding like old statement pieces that would like otherwise be ugly or really unique and like pairing them with other statement pieces and just like an entire outfit full of statement pieces. Um, I was, I think one of the biggest things you have to figure out is like what, what kind of style you want your pictures to have. Um, and then once you're past that, it sort of depends. For my thesis project, I really started out with the styling, and I know that I wanted to do location-based work. I really, really like having lighting that doesn't necessarily fit with the fashion, that doesn't necessarily fit with location. Um, I like when you know, the lighting doesn't make sense with the fact that she's on the beach and she's in a leather skirt on the beach, and why is she, why is she in a leather skirt on the beach? Because she looks great, like that's why. Um, so I think figuring out your intentions are really important. And for me, it sort of started with the garments and a location and then pairing those two things together. But for some people, it starts in totally different ways. Some people find a person and then build a whole story around the person. Um, in my senior year, in the photos that you saw, I was working with model agencies. I was doing what are called test shoots, which you'll learn about in class. Basically, it's when a newer model needs photos for her book and a photographer needs pictures for their book, so they both work together and then they both get pictures out of it. Um, so I was working with models that were, you know, like that's their job, and I think that was a really important fa factor to like have models that knew what they were doing. Um, but yeah. That did remind me that, um, speaking of your fashion work, one of the things that you were awarded um, for um, during graduation this year was Le Book, um, which is um, 
like a fashion platform where you were given a membership for a year to put your work online, right? Yeah, that was one of another, I did like forget about that, but that was another opportunity is like as a graduating senior, there are certain commencement awards and one of the commencement awards was um, like a year long, like premium s s sub subscription to Le Book, which is like a platform to post your work. They, they have, I don't quite, I haven't like, really done like a big deep dive. I've like made my account. Um, but I know that it's like a really big networking opportunity. Any other questions? First of all, thank you for a, a really great presentation. I very much enjoyed listening. It's clear you guys are all speaking with, with a common voice. I mean, what I'm taking away, and this is just a prelude to my question, is that um, first, this is an art school with a capital A. It's not a liberal arts school that happens to have some arts. If you want to, if you want to go to art school, this is great. Uh, fantastic resources and excellent professional opportunities. With that as a starting point, here, here, here's my question. There's been a lot of research suggesting that the longer you are out of school, the less important technical skills become, and the more important things like creativity problem solving, and the ability to get along with other people become. So my question is, how are those skills, is, is this just the art equivalent of sort of, you know, is this highly, totally vocational, where you're, you're, you're learning about printing, you're learning about this, you're learning about that, you have the best equipment, or, you know, what are you doing to cultivate and develop the other skills? Uh, whatever they are, listening, the ability to get along with other people, creativity, creativity, creativity. What, do you, what are the courses or other things that go on here to stimulate those areas of your mind that are probably make the difference between good and great? Well, that's a great question. Um, I wonder if Joe maybe wants to answer that because I know he has a lot to say uh, because we do have a very pluralistic approach to education. I was actually going to speak specifically to that. Come out? Oh, that's such a great question, yeah, because, so let me talk a little bit about my experience, because you're all here today thinking about choices and is art school the right choice? So in my instance, um, like some folks said, I wanted to get to New York City. So I went to Columbia University, I double majored in architecture and art history. And after that I thought, but I actually want to be, I'm an artist, I'm a creative person. So I went to Yale and got my master's. But actually, the community that I've been the most a part of for the longest is SVA. As soon as I graduated from SVA, I came here and started teaching. I've taught in the department for 21 years, six of which I've run the department. And of course, I bring with me the education that I got at Columbia and Yale. So all the things I learned there are part of the ideology about how I run the department. That said, I'm always so impressed, not only by these four folks, and Talia too, of course, but also by all the students who come to our department because they have the courage to say, I'm an artist and this is where I'm gonna begin. That's a courageous act actually to say, I'm gonna do art, but we understand that some of these other things that you're mentioning are also really important. Um, so there are elements of our curriculum that really do focus on liberal arts, that focus on communication, that focus on interaction. A couple of folks mentioned our Becoming exhibition, which is one that has kind of a theoretical component where we pair third year students with uh, recent alumni, usually around some sort of theoretical prompt. Um, we do a lot of different kind of uh, conversational things that engage the students um, and allow for kind of, um, you know, for conversation, for ways about thinking about and communicating and understanding how do we work together? How do we actually prepare ourselves? In many ways, the Zanato residency is an example of this too. You know, art students saying like, okay, we're gonna give you the chance to go to Italy for a week. You're gonna do this intensive program where you're working with four of your other classmates. And then you're gonna continue to work on this to actually develop a major exhibition and publication. Your work will be get acquired by that collection. Um, so we're doing a lot of things to kind of integrate that. And my approach is one that is in many ways respecting the liberal arts. As I mentioned before, I'm very much committed to a pluralistic approach where every opinion and every perspective is vital mm -hmm. to us arriving at some idea of what truth is, right? Because there's many, many truths and many lived experiences in this room. And if we're ever gonna get to some idea of a collective truth, we better listen to each other. So at my core is actually making sure that we think about these things. One of the very first things that I did when I became the chair of the department is I did an overhaul of our visual literacy course. 
This is a course that actually asks our students to become literate in understanding who are contemporary photographers, what is this medium, how does it look? And what I immediately did is said, actually, what we need to do is understand there is not one literacy. There are multiple literacies. So I invited each teacher to actually give me a list of 40 people that they thought were important. From that list, we actually determined a collective idea of who is important, but giving the teacher then the opportunity to add another 20 people that they personally think is important. And you may say, well, then why are you teaching different literacies? Because we're actually telling the students that there is not a singular literacy, and you never become fully literate. You actually spend your life trying to become literate, and there's always more to learn. So I think at the core of what we're offering is for our students to understand that we're teaching you how to learn so that when you finish here, you continue to learn and thrive. It's not four years you're done, your education is over. It's four years of tools so that you have a life lifetime of learning and can continue to evolve and be creative and learn from every opportunity that you have. And in many ways, I think that's sort of imbuing what I learned at Columbia and Yale, but actually bringing it to this amazing place, SVA, where we get to do make, we do make things and there is an aspect of vocation, right? People do learn how to do actual skills, but at, you're right in saying it's not ultimately the skills because we also tell our students something which is, you're a first year student, you're learning video, and the software that you're learning will be obsolete by the time you graduate. So if you think it's, that's what it's about, it's not. But we're smart enough to say we're gonna teach you how to continue to learn, so when you're a first year out of your time, your first year alum, right, you know how to learn the new technology to keep going, but you have those more vital skills about creativity, collaboration, creative thinking, so that you can continue to succeed. And things are always evolving. So we never I take this idea that we're sort of fixed, right? Who we are is always evolving. I'm evolving. All the people on the panel are evolving, right? That's actually the most we can hope for is that we all continue to evolve. I just want to say one thing really quick as well. Part of the curriculum, um, although there's a lot of like, like electives that are more specialized, each student um, has a year-long crit class every single year. Um, and that's sort of your main like, like, where you are making your work, like if nobody told you to make work if you weren't in school, what work would you be making? Um, that's where you bring prints and you talk to your whole class. And that's usually a six hour long class. So sometimes you're even talking about work more than you're actually making the work. And that is really what pushes you forward as an artist. You're talking about not only your own work, but your classmates' work, how the work relates to each other, how the work exists within the world. Um, and I think those two sides of what you were talking about, they're both really, really important. And they, they're both touched on throughout your whole four years here at SVA. We have time for one last question. Um, I guess this question for everybody. Um, how do you like manage school work and like time in school with like, out, if you have, a, say you have a job, like how would you, I guess, manage school work and getting things done in school while also, you know, having a job at the same time? If, you know, I know the classes are kind of long and stuff like that. I, one, one of the great ways to do that is to work at school. Um, I had a plethora of campus jobs, one of which I, I see many in the audience now of, of like open house uh, student, like helpers. Um, I worked in as a tour guide, um, both within the photo and video department and with um, uh, admissions. I worked at the hub, I worked at the student center. Um, and I think like starting out working by working in school is a really great opportunity because you're not adding in this whole second place that you need to like learn how to exist in. And a lot of campus jobs they give you the opportunity to work around your school schedule really easily. Um, you know, you're hanging out with people that you are also hanging out with in class, but also expanding your network of students. Um, and a lot of times there's also like some free time for you to also work on your own stuff. Um, so I would say start off with campus jobs. Um, there's a billion of them at school. <laughs> um, I feel like if you want to have some extra time for like internship or jobs, like um, all the outside of school, I have a trick, you know, when you kind of like managing your courses, you can simply just put every, like all of your class in maybe three days of a week. So you have like four days in a week to kind of like do your own exploration or jobs. Yeah, I'll double tap on that saying, uh, 
being strategic in the way in which you plan your schedule. And I think also there are, are multiple opportunities for, for a lot of classes so that if you are trying to make like a specific, let's say a three day, four day week of your classes, um, sometimes uh, there are ways in which you can get, be able to take all the classes that you still want uh, it might be with a different professor, but you'll still be getting like a really valuable class uh, experience out of that. But being strategic in the which in the way in which you plan your schedule will really help you being able to work as work and explore um, outside of the classroom. I'll add that you know we're aware of these scheduling concerns from students, and we also see that a lot of like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday classes are more popular, and that is kind of where the most of Many of our classes are scheduled, not all of them, so there is kind of, it's built in to understand that there are days of the week that are less popular for people because they need to do things like work. Yeah, I don't think I ever had it like a single Friday class, so I think about it. We do have a few for the well, folks that like them. But. Yeah. Thank you so much to the department staff and to our panelists this morning. Uh, we're now going to head to the department for tours and lunch. Um, so if our tour guides could grab their signs and lead everyone out to the lobby, we will board the shuttle over to the east side. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. you, guys. Oh, can we have a round of applause for our amazing panel, too? Thank you so much. We'll see you all over in the photo and video building.